Hello there ladies and gentlemen, Sigvald here and welcome back to another video. So Dark Knight Soul Raids is back and this is to an extent my favorite Soul Raid. I feel like this Soul Raid does the absolute best job of balancing being a little bit challenging but not being challenging in an unfair way and not being paid to win in any way. So all the bosses in this Soul Raid I feel like uh, are playable against with minimal resources and the bosses that are a little bit harder there's going to be some certain things that you can do and some certain things that you can do counter play against it's not going to be anywhere situation like uh, uh multiverse black lightning in uh, on iso raids where you just feel like you played it properly but you're simply unlucky and that's why it resulted in uh, not an optimal scenario there and also we got the kind of best artifact for the free to play people out there for this all raid if any of you watching the channel haven't finished this all raid uh, in normal at the very least do your best because uh, after you get dark metal cards this will be your go-to artifact for damage dealing in kind of all the soul raids and that's what I'm using now on the secondary account on all characters. Uh, first up we got some fights from the main account and I messed up a little bit with the League of Anarchy. We had a little bit of a rough start and this made this fight far more close than it should have been but we eventually managed to pull ourselves together and are going to get the win here. By the way in terms of passive stats I'm gonna have a level 6 Dark Metal cards, level 5 uh, Joker Ice Batrang, and uh, a third level uh, Hand of Zatanna. That's uh, gonna be what passive stats we have here. I have both Sucker Fate here, and I have uh, him playing Sakwan with Beta Club and Raven. Uh, this dude uh, does a few things. I do like this boss, I, I do like him a lot. Uh, because I feel like it's a boss that uh, yet again doesn't feel unfair, though it is interesting enough to play against. You'll have longer tagins, you'll have the special 2 disabled, and then same time his special 2 has kind of a vortex effect that pulls you in it, and you can't uh, get out of it unless you do a jump attack, and jump attack will get you out of it, and while you're in it, you can't uh, uh, tag in and out at all, and can't move. I, I do definitely like this boss. And so the, the idea here is that we're going to stack some darkness with Draven and use Kim Flan Sakuman to apply a lot of dot damage. And it's not gonna be uh, the, the best executed fight out of them all. Usually I don't really try too hard with the Kim Flan Sakuman Raven fight. Because if I try too hard with this fight, it will be over too soon. And if it's over too soon, I might get a message saying, Oh, unusual gameplay detected on your account. Are you hacking? No, I'm using an artifact that I paid money for at this point. Also, don't worry, we'll have some fights from the secondary account as well, where there's snow, beta club and stuff like that. Raven back in there, just resetting the darkness attacks, we're at 5 currently. Resetting again. I want that cooldown to be uh, as big as possible before attacking back in, because uh, there's gonna be um, uh, a certain time before I can tag Raven back in, I need to make sure darkness does not expire before that. And it doesn't, it really doesn't, we have a very very good margin of resetting darkness. But at the same time I just like to be safer in that regard. And there's the special too, so I try to back off there because I forgot about this mechanic and proceed to get hit. And I can't even tag out at this point, he's doing another special too. But there you go, jump attack and you can get out of it. But Raven got hit pretty badly there, sadly. But she's fine, she did not reset the darkness yet, so that's good. You can find Sakuman not the most fortunate tagging, but we need to get Raven out of there. Jump attack, third special, and I think that dot damage is going to be uh, enough to finish the job here. Yeah, when you don't see numbers flying up, but there's still the... Uh, uh, dots debuff on the screen, you know that he has no health to go around and he's hitting at uh, 1 HP. So yeah, that was uh, boss Dr. Fate. Now moving on to boss Blue Beetle, and yes, we're going to also have uh, a reward in this one. Hold on, I'm actually gonna stop recording for a bit, because I need to make sure I put it in, in the fights, because most likely I forgot. Be right back. Okay, so to my surprise, I actually did not forget to put it in this time. Uh, so uh, we're going to use here Brainiac with uh, Grodd and Robin. I really tried my best to um, one chat with every single fight uh, uh, on this account because I wanted to also get uh, a little bit of a solid reward in there that we might uh, we might get something good, something worth showing. We'll see how that goes. Uh, but yeah, Brainiac in there, just spinning him to a corner. Come on, dropping a special one. I have the uh, level uh, six Dark Metal cards on him uh, and. Uh, 
uh, the uh, level uh, 3 uh, Hand of Zatanna on Robin. Hand of Zatanna actually gives a little bit more attack uh, even at third level than uh, uh, level 5 uh, Drupal's bat ranks. So yeah, that's what they're going to be using for now, but I think I'm gonna further go with Sejokurai's bat ranks in terms of upgrading an artifact here. The yeah, Growth gets back in there, we use super move and now we're just going to combo and drop this dude and pin him to the corner. I'm gonna switch around a bit between combo and chopping him and doing the infinite combo, I'm going to mess up a few times. So it's not gonna be the absolute cleanest gameplay possible, but it's, it's gonna be enough for the most part. This dude also has a hazard that's... Uh, I'm not sure what it does except for doing dots damage to you, but I don't think it's uh, anything too relevant. I think he also has something that says you you can you can only break combo with, with specials or his combo can't be broken while he is in that hazard. Interesting mechanic, but not strong enough to be really impactful. Also, it will be very toned down in this one because uh, usually when there's hazards in the fights, those hazards, interestingly enough, are going to depend on the boss's attack. So because of the fact that Grodd is constantly reducing his attack, the hazard is gonna be even less effective. But yeah, easy one shot over here and uh, the rewards are, as usual, who would have thought, garbage. So moving on to the second account. I have here boss Starfire and she's got 75 mil health as far as I'm aware. So I was like, okay, we do the uh, Just Sick team and I think with perfect gameplay we can one shot here. Uh, so on, this, on this account I have uh, a third level Dark Metal cards and level 1 Dark Metal cards and that's gonna be about it. I don't even have three of them for the passive stats and uh, that was a little bit of a mistake. I should not have shattered the uh, last slot that I got so I have uh, so I had three artifacts put, to put on all my characters and considering that we're all the way in tier 1 it's gonna take a while before we get uh, another one so we're going to run on a lack of passive stats here a bit. Also would be... Uh, Quite interesting uh, to see how all blades would do here, since we have dark metal cards anyway and we can put it on the combo builder because we put it anyway for the uh, passive stats and we can try all blades on the damage there and see how the damage difference uh, behaves, though I still suspect dark metal cards will do more, e even though by putting all blades we're not missing out on absolutely any passive stats, we'll see how that goes, might test it on some teams, definitely not on this team, like this team has no way of doing better with all blades than with dark metal cards, but we'll try it on our team and he see how that goes. And with this fight, look, there were two mistakes. We, we failed this two times. Uh, first of all, I failed to come and chop once myself, which is totally on me. And second time, it was that glitch that uh, when you're come and chopping and pressing those keys, your character will randomly back off into a ranged attack. And that was uh, never my intention. But at the very least, we did 69 mil, so I'm happy with that. We'll have to waste another team to clean up there. Now for the next one we're going to use the Reverse Flash Star Bench team. I'm putting God Killer on Reverse Flash to kind of do the infinite combo from time to time, I guess. Again, if I put if I could put any passive stats on Reverse Flash, I would put it. But as I said, we're literally missing uh, uh, a Dark Metal card to put there. To have only third level Dark Metal card on Star Banshee and level 1 Dark Metal card on Power Girl for the passive stats. I was like, okay, we might as well put the uh, God Killer in there. Though definitely not something that's mandatory and I would have put some passive stats if I could. With this team I think I'm gonna try all blades again and see how that goes because if there's any character that benefits from the all blades and might benefit in this very specific scenario more from all blades on, it's definitely gonna be Sir Banshee. But yeah, we'll see how that goes. Most likely I'll do that um, uh, tomorrow so you guys will have to wait a bit until you see a video on that. Because I mean we just use Sir Banshee, it's, it's gonna be 24 hours before I can use her again. Also, about this raid, uh, I was a bit surprised, though not really, lately not really. I was surprised because I thought uh, after the last contract we were going to get new soul raids with Zatanna as the final boss. That will most likely be here, it, again it's not, it has not been confirmed really that's gonna be the case yet, by, but I highly expect that. But at the same time I did not expect we would get it after the last contract, uh, because uh, usually they hype it up, they would hype Zatanna up, maybe release Zatanna earlier and then the soul raid, and uh, when there were like two days left of the last contract I was like okay they did not begin the marketing for the new one or for Zatanna so it's most likely gonna be uh, the Dark Knights. And also if you've noticed now that we got the change in soul raids they are basically in order of release 
So in theory after this one we should get on ISOL raids and then the cycle resets itself. And uh, also I feel like every single time they add a new soul raid it's going to be randomly dropped wherever. It doesn't matter where it's dropped. And then the cycle continues and uh, it gets added uh, uh, into the cycle afterwards after the release. That's why we uh, have had stuff like uh, Dark Knight Soul Raids into Last Contract Soul Raids into Dark Knights again because it was randomly added and then put at the end of the cycle without the cycle resetting, if that makes any sense. And they seem to be doing this for at least half an year at this point, so I think this can be more or less a decent way to take a look at things. Also, still, we have too many soul rates at this point. I'm not saying put less soul rates. The more content in the game, the better. The more ways for people to get some free artifacts that might be good, might be interesting. And the uh, free artifacts that we got lately were just better and better. Like, God Killer was decent. Dark Metal Cards is amazing. Nora Snow Globe is amazing. I just can't wait for new storage just for the free artifacts. The problem with a lot of storage should be solved by allowing you to play two of them at the same time. Just uh, cycle two of them at the same time and they'll be fine. Now moving on to the next fight against boss Superman. Over here I did not know if he had a super shield or not, but that's not gonna matter at all because we are going to one-shot him regardless, so he put Kryptonite Spear on uh, Krator Batman in case he had shield. He didn't have it, but again we're not missing out on anything anyway. So yeah, thanks so much for watching, like the video if you liked it, disliked it if you disliked it. By the way, happy Easter if you are celebrating it, if you're not celebrating Easter then uh, hopefully you have a good day and a good weekend in general. I, I definitely had uh, a little bit of a strong start to the weekend drinking with the, with the boys, that's uh, that's why I might sound a little bit down but I'm fine, I'll, I'll, I'll recover. But yeah, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one, goodbye! This is the future.